my name is Michael Hyman. Um, I don't really remember too, too much um, for the start of it. So some of my injuries were, um, I fractured my C6 in my neck. In my right arm, I broke this bone in 10 places and it actually came out my arm, the bones did. So now I have a metal rod from my shoulder down to my elbow and the nerves got stretched in this arm so I actually cannot, I can't move my right arm so I don't have feeling in my hand. In my right knee, I tore my ACL, MCL, PCL, LCL, and my meniscus. Then I broke my hips and my pelvis in I think three or four places. My left leg, I snapped my femur and it came out the back side of my leg and my leg was actually, they said, behind my head. My left foot got destroyed from the clutch. Broke all kinds of bones in my ankles. He had extensive injuries that none of us had really seen before on our unit. He basically had one good arm to work with. So Nick and I were at home, we just finished up dinner and it came across the TV screen, Rest in Hospital. And I looked the telephone. At him, the telephone, because the phone rang. And I said, who in the world is calling us from Rest in the Hospital? He said, don't answer it. And I said, well. So I'm it's... thinking sales or something, yeah. I don't know. So I answered it and it was him. Well, I knew he was on the motorcycle, so I knew that couldn't be good. And I said, are you okay? And he said to me, um, somebody pulled out in front of me. I said, well, are you okay? He said, well, I don't really know, because I, I just woke up. He's my little brother, so when I first found out about it and going through the whole entire thing, I just couldn't do anything but pray and try to stay positive for him because I didn't want him to see me being weak when I'm trying to be strong for him because he needed someone to be strong for him. It took a little while for me to realize how severe everything was. Um, I guess I didn't realize that it was going to be, they were telling me that it was going to be months before I was going to be able to walk and that was just something that I wasn't going to accept. And I was always the one that took the night shift. So I was always the one who could go without any sleep and sleep wherever I could fall asleep sitting straight up if I had to. I guess after the surgeries I was at Reston Hospital for three weeks or so and then I didn't need as much care. Um, you know, the hourly care, so I was able to go home into a hospital bed and stay there. And he drove me crazy. <laughs> he has this little whistle that he does anytime he wants something. Then he wants to come, he didn't know what he wanted, whether it was a blanket, a snack, a drink, a phone, a movie, anything. He just always wanted something. So I would sit up with him and just talk with him and try to help him through keep his mind off of certain things. And then I had to come back and get my external fixator um, removed. And then that day, Darren came in the room and said, all right, you're gonna have to walk today. And my feet haven't been on the ground in a month and a half, two months. So it was kinda, I was kinda nervous. So he helped stand me up and I took one or two, three steps. And he was like, all right, you're ready to go to rehab. Another thing that I noticed about uh, Michael was the constant stream of visitors and loved ones that came in just to say hey, just to hang out. Uh, whenever we went to go work with Michael phys for physical therapy, we usually had three or four different people, little people that were in there just hanging out. And that just spoke volumes to me that he attracted these people that would come out of the way. I don't know where they came from, but they came to visit Michael. The family posted his birthday video. I sobbed when I saw Michael walk. Like, I kid you not, I started crying. I'm gonna start crying again. Like, that is why I'm a nurse, to why I'm a trauma nurse, too. To see people go through such devastation and have them come out on the other side. Being at Reston Hospital for about a month almost, you know, People don't realize, you know, you're staying at a hospital for a month, so the people that are taking care of you are almost like your new friends. And they actually were really great. Um, I would never have guessed that, you know, to be able to build like almost a friendship with the nurses or the techs or anything like that. So it was unbelievable. My thoughts on a hospital would never have been like, they're five star, taking care of you, everything, you need something done, rest in the hospital, they'll take care of it. Um, so the nurses were, if I just wanted my leg moved over, which I needed stuff like that a lot. I was kind of high, I was a high maintenance um, 
guy, uh, but they were really good to me. I was asked to help out taking care of his um, lig ligamentous knee injury. Um, he had a complex knee injury, um, tearing uh, the majority of the ligamentous structures in his knee. Um, he had to piece his knee back together. I saw him from uh, the standpoint where he was bed bound uh, for uh, two months after the surgery to the point where he is now uh, walking uh, and uh, functional uh, and doing the things that he wants to be doing uh, on a daily basis. And it's been uh, extremely rewarding uh, seeing him through uh, that uh, recovery process. I am very, very grateful that he ended up here. I'm a complainer. I'm a fighter for my kids and for my family. And I didn't have to do that here. The hospital, amazing. I have nothing negative to say. Oh, Preston saved my son's life. There's no question about that to No me. doubt. I, I saw Michael today and get out of the car and my heart leapt within my chest. I was like, wow, look at this guy. Michael, you're the man. I want to say that. You, you are the man.